a very good morning my dear loving children and welcome to vidyanagar public schools online classes today we will learn a new chapter and so far in the video lessons we discussed poems stories right today we will learn a different style of writing a different piece of writing you know it's like a documentary it's a documentary writing or we can say it's a journalistic piece of writing it's a journalistic piece of writing and the chapter title is saving chilika saving chilika so you might be wondering what is chilika what is meant by saving chilika okay uh, chilika is actually a place okay before moving into that moving into the discussion about chilika let me talk about um, world heritage sites you have you are very much familiar with this word right and you have heard about this right yes very good and this world heritage sites means uh, these are the natural sites or it's uh, man made sites which is of international importance right and it deserves special protection it deserves it deserves to be protected specially right and these are the sites which is recognized by unesco as world heritage sites which is having international importance and uh, when i talk about this you might be very much familiar with uh, sundarbans right sundarbans forest you might have heard right yes so like sundarbans chilika is also a place which is having international importance like sundarbans chilika is also one of the world heritage sites about chilika our author gangadhar menon giving us a beautiful piece of documentary a beautiful piece of writing and we all are thankful to gangadhar menon sir mr gangadhar menon for giving such a beautiful piece of writing about chilika okay so let's learn about chilika and you know before moving into the chapter uh, let me tell you about chilika chilika you know it's actually a lake it's a lake it is a kind of a beautiful lake yes and our author gankadhar menon he is visiting this place and do you know who is uh, gankadhar menon yes he is a writer and he is a photographer and he has traveled extensively across india and other neighboring countries also and he has a vast knowledge about many places and he wrote regularly he regularly wrote about nature about the wildlife and about the history anthropology and all and you know he has published more than 150 articles and he has so much articles to his credit so he is a wonderful man he is a wonderful writer so we are lucky to learn about uh, this piece of writing which is also about chilika and we can see our author mr gankadhar menon he is visiting this place is in mangala jodi you know where is this it's a small village in odisha it's a small village in odisha do you know the capital of odisha yes very good it's bhubaneswar right so our author is also coming down from bhubaneswar and he is reaching at last the place called mangala jodi so in that place he is witnessing a very beautiful scenery a very beautiful aesthetically uh, giving a, a place which gives aesthetic pleasure and the place is so beautiful with so many scenic sights so he is talking about that beautiful place so let's see what he is saying right all of you please keep your textbooks open okay so let's read my first glimpse of the lake did not give me a vast sense of its vastness driving down from bhubaneswar i had approached the lake from its northwestern side through a village named mangala jodi so 
However, I reached a path that narrowed down further till it became a bund that sliced the marshlands into two. On one side, hundreds of open-built storks were feeding in a shallow waters, while on the other side, street warblers were creating an endless cacophony. So what is the sight that our author is seeing? Our author is coming down from Bhuvaneshwar and he reached a bund. What is a bund? Yes, a bund is actually a bank of fur or stone built to prevent a river from flooding an area. You have seen the bund uh, when you have visited um, seashores and all. In, on, on the banks of the seashores, you can see these bunds and all. To avoid this river to come or to avoid the uh, water to come to this land, to the uh, area where the people are living. To avoid, we will make a small wall like building. Okay, that bund, that is called the bund. You might have seen, yes? So, in that place, you he is witnessing hundreds of open build stokes. What is that? Yes, this is open build stalks. It's a kind of bird. It's a kind of grain, right? You see, it's very beautiful, right? Yes, and also street warblers. You see, street warblers? Yes, then these street warblers are creating like a cacophony. What is a cacophony? A mixture. A mixture of loud sounds. An unpleasant mixture of loud noises, right? And here the author is talking about Chilika. This was Chilika, the finest bird sanctuary in India and amongst the richest ecosystems in the world. This unique half salt water, half fresh water lake in Odisha is 70 kilometers in length and 30 kilometers in breadth. It is Asia's largest brackish lake and is the habitat of a number of species of plants and animals. So what is that? It's one of the finest bird sanctuary, right? And it is a, a sanctuary in India. And uh, the ecosystem, what does it mean by ecosystem? Communities of living and non-living things interacting with each other and their physical environment. That is ecosystems, okay? And what do you mean by brackish? Yes, brackish means impure water which has a salty taste. Impure water which has a salty taste. That is brackish. Okay, it's a brackish lake. It is one of the largest wintering grounds for migratory birds in the Indian subcontinent. While I was admiring the lake, my friend told me, uh, Other's friend told him its history and how one man with a team of poachers turned protectors had helped to change its destiny. So the author uh, is talking about his friend who had talked to him about the um, Chilik about the place Chilika where uh, some poachers poachers means. Those who enter into the forest for killing, for hunting these animals. Those people, those who turned into the protectors and helped to change its destiny. So the friend is talking about uh, how the poachers turned into protectors and uh, came, to be, uh, pe came to be those people, those who protect that place. In the year 1981, Chilika was recognized as a Ramsar site for its ecological importance and rich biodiversity. In a matter of 10 years, all this changed. Chilika was tagged as a degraded site and put on the red list. So in the year 1981, Chilika came uh, recognized as a Ramsar site. What is Ramsar site? Here you see. The Ramsar site is a wetland, a large area of land that is very wet and soft, that is of international importance. The Ramsar Convention or the Convention on Wetlands is the International Environmental Treaty that was signed in 1971. 
in Ramsar, a city in Iran, and it aims to conserve wetlands and to use the resources responsibly. So, Chilika is also considered to be one of the uh, Ramsar site. Okay, and it's ecological. What do you mean by ecological? Environmental. Ecological importance. So that means environmental importance. Biodiversity. The variety of plants and animals life in a place is called biodiversity, right? This was because of a dual tragedy that struck Chilika. Why Chilika is being tagged as degraded site? Degraded means here ruined, destruction, destructed site. Why? Here you see. Firstly, First reason for that is there was rampant poaching. There was rampant poaching. Rampant means spreading everywhere. Difficult to check. Very difficult to check. Poaching means I told you what is poaching. It's an illegal catching or killing of animals is called poaching. About a thousand birds were killed every day by shooting, by trapping in nets and by poisoning them with pesticides. And soon the number of birds dwindled to just a few thousand. What's happening there? Many people is illegally shooting and killing and trapping these birds. And uh, the number of birds came to be a uh, few thousands. But they were millions. But they came to be few thousand. Just few thousands. And second reason, around the same time, the mouth of the lake started narrowing down till it almost closed. So, the amount of seawater entering the lake decreased. Due to reduced salinity, many freshwater weeds began to grow here, which is in turn destroyed the vegetation of the land. What is the second reason? Yes, the mouth of the lake actually narrowed down. And uh, the reaching of seawater has stopped, almost decreased, almost stopped, we can say. Due to that reason, the salinity, saltiness um, of the water reduced. That uh, chance to be, that chance to, for these weeds to grow in that place, which destroyed the vegetation of that lake. It was... At this time that Nanta Kishore Bujbal returned to Chilikam. And this was the time when Nanda Kishore returned to Chilikam. As a young boy, Nanda Kishore had once shot an egret. Egret means it's a kind of crane, it's a bird, okay, near the lake. The bird had fallen to the ground holding a twig in its mouth when Nanda Kishore realized that the egret must have been carried the twig to build a nest he was filled with remorse years later when he came back to chilika he saw that there were only few thousand birds left so uh, our uh, nanda kishore he uh, he actually he shot egret the bird and the bird was actually going to make a nest and he felt very sad for shooting that bird and uh, after many years, when he, re when he returned, he saw uh, the number of birds has reduced enormously. Once again, he left a deep sense of guilt and vowed that he would do everything possible to save the birds. He talked to the people in the neighboring villages and found out that the birds were poached by the Dirty Dozen, a group led by a man named Madhu Behra. Here we stop. Okay. So what he did? He took a decision. He took a vow that he will do his best to stop this poaching of these birds. And there was a group of people called Dirty Dozen who is led by Madhu Behra. And he wanted to stop uh, this illegal poaching by doing his best. By doing his, by putting his best, he wanted to save the nature. Here we stop and we will continue in the next class. Before that, you have a homework. You have to collect the names of migratory birds and 
you have to write down the names of the migratory birds in your notebook okay